Today we're heading to standard to double and triple up some ridiculous attack triggers with Roaming Throne in Ishin. So here is our Roaming Ishin Humans deck, and this deck is so sweet. We are built around Roaming Throne, the coolest card from Lost Caverns of Ixalan, like a super panharmonicon that works with any triggered abilities, upkeep, end step, attack triggers, along with ETB triggers, but only for one specific creature type. So the idea of this deck is we're combining Roaming Throne with Ishin to Heavens this one, which is just a panharmonicon for attack triggers, in a deck that's full of humans with powerful attack triggers. So our big payoffs, and I'm Tackle in Adelie. These are three drops that when we attack, not with them necessarily, but with any creature, they make a token. In our deck, Anim Packle is actually way, way better because Anim Packle, when we attack, it gets a counter that makes tokens equal to the number of counters on it. So let's say we have a Roaming Throne in an Anim Packle. We attack, we get a counter, we get a token, but then it triggers again. Now it gets two counters and we make two tokens. It snowballs out of control really, really quickly. So our goal is we just kind of like play some stuff, play some Roaming Thrones ish and start attacking, making huge board full of tokens and then our big finisher is mishra claim by gix when we attack we get to drain our opponent equal to the number of creatures that attacked so if we have a roaming throne or an ishin or maybe both are multiple roaming thrones there's a pretty good chance that we can like attack and make a bunch of tokens with anapakal and adeline and then stack our triggers in a way that mishra resolves after the tokens come into play tapped and attacking and just drain our opponent out of the game directly without even needing to deal combat damage it's very possible to just like 20 our opponent with mishra drain if we can stack up enough token producers and roaming thrones. We also have some other triggers that work with roaming throne initiation. Inti, when it attacks, we can discard a card to kind of impulse draw for the turn, pump a creature, give it trample. So we have filter throw a deck, getting more damage. Kellen can find some creatures. Lunark Veteran, not an attack trigger, but when a creature ETBs, we gain some life. Uh, actually, in our deck, mostly to discard the Inti is a free discard, but it gives us something to do with one mana on our curve. Then we have the rest of our deck. Recruitment Officer, just another one one drop digs through the deck copper co vanguard and thalia actually really important to the deck so they don't do anything directly with our attack trigger plan but they're really good at protecting our creatures and we really want roaming throne and anapackle and mishra to stick on the battlefield so giving them ward with copper co vanguard making our opponent spells cost one more with thalia just makes it more likely we stick our other stuff copper co vanguard <laughs> is actually sneaky good with roaming throne too because ward is a triggered ability so if we have copper co vanguard and roaming throne we essentially essentially have Ward 2 on all of our humans. It's really Ward 1 twice, but essentially Ward 2. So it's another weird little synergy where you see this ability that like is a triggered ability, but would never work with a Panharmonicon or an Alice Yorn or whatever, actually taking advantage of the uniqueness of Roaming Throne. Otherwise, Get Lost gives us a little bit of removal. Mana base, we have to play a bunch of Cavern of Souls secluded courtyards to make a mana really, really good. In the sideboard, we get a bunch of removal for creature decks, a bunch of grindy stuff like Invasion of Gabacon, Anointed Peacekeeper, Extraction Special, to fight through the control decks, and that is Roaming Ishin Humans for Standard. That's our Much of Brew deck for today, so let's jump into some games and see how ridiculous things can get if we can stack up some Roaming Thrones in a deck full of Ishins and Human with attack triggers. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll be back in a bit for the wrap up. Need some magic cards? Well, you can snag them from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. We've got new tokens and playmats, and you can even get the tokens signed if you want. Check them all out over at mtggoldfishmerch.com. It is Roaming Throne time. We are playing some uh, Roaming Ishin Humans. <laughs> in new standard actually going for mythic today too we're we're just outside of mythic and uh let's see what this hand looks like i mean this hand's fine got a bunch of attack triggers no no issue in a roaming throne but we got time intense actually pretty good at finding us finding us what we need Pony Orzhov, eh? well at some point so this deck we have a lot of these a lot of these lands only make mana for humans but we only ever really need a single white source to cast all of our non-human spells lunark veteran oh there's a roaming throne well all right land on human get down intent then the other nice thing about intent is our deck has a lot of redundant legends like we have four intents we have four uh etla polanis or whatever the whatever the boros three drop is so it's nice to be able to discard extras for some amount of value so our opponent playing a life gain deck they might be a life gain oh virtue boo okay yep well there goes intent we draw another intent. 
We do need to hit our lands. Like, we really want to just curve this Adel line into the ro uh, roaming throne, and then we're in business. Opponent's probably playing a lot of removal. That's kind of... Ooh, Resplendent Angel, spicy. All right, we need a white source in the next two turns. Oh, God. All right, we're going to attack and discard something to see if we can hit a land. Not the most value out of intent, but we really... Yeah, let's get rid of this, Kellen. All right, so we get to make this a 3-3. Three, three. Gets Trample. Mishra. Ooh, all right. <laughs> well, <laughs> not off to the best start here. We can play this Copper Coat Vanguard, but this Angel's about two turns away from winning the game, assuming our opponent hits their land drops. All right, there's a land. Yeah, I mean, if our opponent can uncheck start pumping this. Oh, and a voice to the blessed. Yeah, this is getting worse. We might just be dead here. We do need more than two lands to really do our thing. <laughs> That is the TLDR. Our opponent gets in and hits us down to 16. If we draw white source and can get rid of the resplendent angel, we still have some hope. All right, there's a white source. Is there any way we can, like, bait our opponent into blocking? Maybe we just got to stay on defense. We don't have to kill the respawn angel now. If they don't pump it, it's fine. Get loss is actually pretty big because that can also kill a, a virtue. Do we attack? Let's get it with intent. Actually, maybe both maybe we're still the aggro here we can discard this intent to pup the vanguard trading with the voice of the blessed would be great you know let's just let's just go intent intent no discard this turn if our opponent trades great if not fine i mean play the recruitment officer and now we pass if our opponent goes land pump resplendent angel we definitely have to kill it if they don't we might still kill it we have two problems at the moment because this voice of the blessed is also is also an issue like that will also beat us eventually all right there's a land i mean this really incentivizes the pump right that was not on my list of possibilities <laughs> out of all the things i thought our opponent might do this turn Main phase of Murex token to grow the voice of the blessed was not one of them. We might still have to kill it. Ah, this is tough. I mean, we're going to have to kill it eventually, right? And we want to do things next turn. So I think we kill it and then hope we find a way to deal with this voice of the blessed. We also kind of need to close out this game pretty quickly because this virtue is going to come down and start reanimating the angel. Yeah, opponent going to map on the voice of the blessed. Inspiring. Oh, so they're angel. Hmm. Okay, so it's like angel life gain hybrid i guess i mean you might as well spend the last map well i guess it doesn't matter if you left it on top we draw land we can play roaming throne how can we win this game opponents at 18. the good news about this virtue is it does take a turn like it comes down does nothing and then the next turn it's good so we do plus one turn if our opponent casts that to win the game i guess we just run out the adeline get in with the intent trigger discard the intent trigger oh it's so good if we get roaming thrown down uh copper coat vanguard not gonna be casting that this turn opponent gonna block the token take five i mean there is a weird world where maybe this roaming throne can steal uh, we're short on cards in hand is the biggest issue opponent grows a voice yeah this voice is Ah, uh, this voice is probably going to do it. Took us too, uh, too long to hit land number three. Yeah, voice too big. Too big. Opponent's going to map on the angel. Amelia Bedelia. Mm-hmm. And we take seven. So, I mean, I guess we have to just draw a removal spell for the voice. That's our our pseudo out. If we can kill the voice, we got a shot. Otherwise, Adeline. Well, yeah. Roaming throne. Swing out. I don't think we can get lethal, though. Actually, none of this actually matters, does it? We can't get through lethal. And then we die in the backswing. Yeah, I mean, we'll do some attacking. I don't know. Maybe our opponent punts somehow and, like, blocks with the voice of the blessed. I mean, we do get to double trigger. Unfortunately, we can't double trigger the intent because we only got one card in hand. Yeah, let's just attack with Adeline. I don't think... <laughs> Our one shot is that our opponent blocks with the voice of the blessed, and I don't think there's any way we can force them to block with the voice of the blessed. I think we're just dead, unless our opponent just does some harebrained play here. Uh, would you like to block with your 7-7 seven, seven lethal flyer opponent, please? How about, how about a little blocking? What do you think of a smidge of blocking? No, not the tokens. You gotta block the, the Adeline. <laughs> Maybe we should have just swung out. I guess that, if we're dead next turn anyway, I guess what's the harm? Maybe that makes our opponent block more. So yeah, it might've been too conservative. I mean, this makes it easy because our opponent can just chump block with the with the Lunark veteran or something, or not even block at all. 
Yeah, that might have been a little conservative. Really, though, there's not a realistic way for us to win there. We're, we're basically just counting on our opponent doing something incredibly stupid. <laughs> and our opponent avoided doing something incredibly stupid. Uh, so, we can bring in a bit more removal. Thalia doesn't look super great. Angels are pretty, pretty creature heavy. Hmm. Is Elspeth Smite? Yeah. We might. I'm on the fence about Smite. Do we want Smite or do we want more big stuff? I think that's fine. Mishra is like incredibly explosive in this deck. On to game number two. We learned last game, we need we need lands to win. This hand's actually pretty sweet. If we just hit our land drops up the curve here, Intent and uh, Pakali, oh my God, I'm saying that so wrong, into, into Roaming Throne is a lot of tokens. That's kind of the, that's the main gimmick of this deck is Roaming Throne attack triggers. Once you add Ish into the mix, it gets even, even more ridiculous. And then the nice thing about humans is they get a lot of odd protection with like Thalia and Coppercoat Vanguard. Roaming Throne with like an extra ward or with a Thalia tax becomes really hard to kill. And we only really need it for a couple of turns, usually. Well, Cavern on human, in case our Orzov opponent thinking about uh, casting some counter spells. So let's run out Intent. In it. Inti? Inti. I think it's Inti. My god, these names. <laughs> This has been the the hardest pronunciations that my I just do not know I do not know enough of the language about it. Yada. Well, a land is good. This lets us start doing things. Run out the make some golems. Do we even want to discard? Probably not. If they want to trade with Giada, that's fine. So the thing about a uh, Inti is we can't, since we already played a land, we're not going to be able to spend, uh, play the card that exiles this turn. So there's not a whole lot of reasons to, uh, to discard next turn. Maybe we'll see if we draw land, we're just slamming roaming throne and going to town. If we don't draw land, we might like discard the destroy evil or something to try to hit a land for the next turn. What do you got angel? Wow. Passes. Well, this kind of works out because. Lunark Veteran is perfect for discarding. We can play it from the graveyard anyway. Disturb it. Ooh, ah, 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 from the graveyard. When you stack these triggers, I actually, when I first started playing this deck, I had auto triggers on. It does it backwards. You really want Inti to resolve first. So you can put an extra counter on Anum to get an extra token out of Anum. So if you decide to try this deck, you're probably going to have to turn off auto order triggers in the options. Because for some reason, this one interaction, every time Arena does it, exactly the backwards way that I wanted to do it. <laughs> well, okay. It's actually kind of fine. We can just get lost to the Giada. And I'm really snowballs. Like, if this sticks out, it really snowballs. Doubly so with the uh, Inti putting extra counters on it. Wow, Elspeth Smite. Okay, I mean, that's fine. Inti kind of did its job. We're actually just presenting lethal even without the roaming throne. This might be this might be a freebie. This is like reverse of game one. Game one, we got stuck on two lands. Game two, opponent missed land number three. Oh, I really do want to hit the land because this roaming throne, it makes so many tokens. Double triggering the anim is so sweet. Coyote. Oh, our opponent <clears throat> must be a big fan of that. Five color Kamigawa Spirit Legend. What are you doing? Don't look at the Anim. Just take the tokens to the face. It'll be fine. We're seeing the downside of these map tokens. Like, without a creature, they just don't do anything. They're, like, kind of valueless here. Wow. After all that, it's a Steel Seraph. Which, if we draw land, I think our opponent's dead. Whoo! Whoo! All right. Uh, land. Let's do a little Roman on human. And this is where it gets fun. Uh, we will Anum times two. That is nine tokens and a very dead opponent. <laughs> oh, one turn later than we wanted, but still like, you usually only need one attack with that setup to just close out the game. Wow, we might want the, the smite. It's probably worth it. Our opponent does have a lot of stuff it kills. Not convinced Thalia does much of anything, honestly. Can we get in the second smite? Eh, maybe this is... Yeah, let's go down the Mishra. I'm going back... Like, Mishra double triggering is ridiculous, especially with all the tokens. You can stack the triggers right to have the tokens come in first, and then you just get them, but killing things seems important against our opponent's deck. Uh, this hand... Ooh, we actually have an Ishin. Little scary because we <laughs> didn't hit land number two in game one, but we're on the draw. Roaming through. Well, a Ganjo and Recruitment Officer. 
I like that we have multiple removal spells. Angels can can snowball pretty good with Giada. If you can stick a Giada and start casting other angels, it gets it gets bad quick. Although our opponent's kind of like a life gainy angel hybrid. All right, there's a Giada. Well, there's land number three. Well, cavern on human. We're just gonna kill the Giada. There's no way they're gonna block the recruitment officer. I guess we could have bluffed it, but there's no there's no chance. Well, this is kind of where we want to be. Now we put our opponent to the removal check. I mean, we have the full package this game. We have the Anum and the Ishin and the Roaming Throne. I mean, our opponent probably has some removal I expect. Orzov is a removal e color. All right, there's a Resplendent Angel. Hmm, let's just play Ishin. We can't really attack with the recruitment officer into the angel with the anim out anyway, so set up for next turn. I wish Ishin wasn't legendary. That's the biggest difference between Ishin and Roaming Throne in this deck is Ishin, the legendary aspect is annoying. Roaming Throne you can stack up a bunch of, but Ishin you can't. All right, opponent, gonna play Voice of the Blessed, gonna map into Amelia Bedelia, and uh, if they get another non-land, then we still can't attack. Path of Pyrrhal, that's interesting. I guess we can just Anim and Chump attack. With two triggers, it's probably worth it. Oh, that Path of Peril is annoying. That's gonna be an issue. How do we beat this Path of Peril? All right, opponent gets in with the Angel, down to 17. Another Anim's actually pretty nice. Maybe we just force our opponent to Path of Peril early? Get in. Ishin, double trigger, three tokens up to a three, four. Anim and Ishin are big enough to survive without uh, without it being cleaved at least. And now our tokens can trigger our Anim, so we should be able to keep snowballing. Uh, I don't think they can flare it off here, right? They gotta wait. So next turn, our opponent's gonna try to land Path of Peril. That's gotta be their plan. They survive this turn. It's gonna hurt a lot, but they do survive. All right, Inspiring Overseer, draw a card, get a counter. Yeah, the fact that Anim doesn't have to attack to do all this is kind of wild. Like, we can just attack with a token and double trigger Anim and make so many bodies. If we could also play the Roaming Throne, do we, if we draw a land, do we Roaming Throne? That's the question. Even though we know this Path to Peril is probably going to, oh. Well, I mean, we're putting it on human. Sometimes you got to put it on Golem, but it, they don't have counters, so always, Always put it on human. But keep in mind, if you run into a counter spell deck, sometimes it's right to put the second cavern on Golem for a roaming throne. Do we play it though? So if we play it, we get triple Anim triggers. It's too sweet to pass up. It's too sweet. Put it on human. I think we just all out attack. All right, triple Anim. So four tokens, 12, to 12 tokens, 12 tokens. <laughs> Oh, we don't quite get lethal though, right? Wow, this is, we're gonna end up like one point short of lethal here. I mean, that's the power of the Roaming Throne. <laughs> that is what Roaming Throne Initiative can do. Opponent's gonna go to one, I think. Yeah, opponent's at one. Do they have the land? The good news if they have, to, yeah, all right, there it is. So they can land Path the Peril. That also blows up their stuff. I mean, I guess they could pump the angel, but that doesn't really matter, right? Actually, I don't think they have enough real white mana. Yeah, they can't even. These pain lands can't make white. Well, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna depend on those last couple cards. We do have another roaming throne in Anim to rebuild. We're actually just gonna jump with this roaming throne because our opponent has to sweep and they have to they have to cleave it or else they die to the Anim. So and then we can rebuild with something. All right, there's a sweeper. So if we roaming throne, we play Anim, attack with roaming throne, double trigger. Yeah, let's just roaming throne. The ward mains our opponent's gonna have to spend their turn killing it if that's their plan. Roaming Throne might actually be good. It might actually be a good constructed card. I'm thinking it might be the best Painter Monicon we've ever seen. It's It does such ridiculous things. And the one thing I love about Roaming Throne is I keep getting deck lists from people. They're like, oh, play it in Monks in a Spell Slinger deck. Like there's so many different possibilities since it works with any triggered ability that the, the possibilities are pretty endless. All right, Amelia. So I guess our opponent's like, just white black life gain, mostly? I mean, if they can't kill the roaming throne or the anim, they just die. Opponent passes, one card in hand. Well, we can't not go for it. I guess they need to kill both. Well, they could chump the, the roaming throne. Well, play the anim. Let's see if they have it. So they gotta kill the anim pre-combat. Otherwise, roaming throne double triggers, tokens, GG. But if they can kill the anim and an opponent, 
scoops it up, and I mean, that's a good example of how all it takes is one turn with the roaming throw to just absolutely dominate the game. Going for Mythic with some roaming throne ishing humans today. And this hand looks pretty good. Let's see what our opponent's up to. Oh, Demir A. Uh, Cavern, unhuman. And re recruitment officer. The sand doesn't really have anything that works with roaming throne yet. We could use one of our attack trigger three drops. And go for the throw. Yeah, we kind of wanted that to live. Ooh, okay, okay. Okay, Adeline. Not, actually, not as good as Anim in this deck, but still pretty good. And double triggering it is pretty sweet. Well, get in smack, yeah. Put it down to 18. Do you have more removal? I mean, you're Demir. You probably have more removal. But if you don't, this Roaming Throne's going to do some work. Ooh, ooh. Oh, opponent might be in trouble. Liliana is not the removal they needed. Okay, this is going to get out of hand. So opponent takes down. We sacrifice the veteran since we cast it from the graveyard. Oh, another Roaming Throne. Uh, all right, Cavern on Gollum this time since our opponent could have counters. Uh, Roaming Throne. And let's uh, double trigger. And we also get to kill the Liliana. Yes, it's a decent amount of damage. Token, token. Hitcha, hitcha. And I mean, our opponents at the... Like, they need something now where they're gonna die <laughs> that is the power of the roaming throne opponent passes do we just like slam another roaming throne and <laughs> i guess <laughs> we would like even more attack triggers wow okay uh on cute man and go attacking and triple trigger if you're gonna kill evil oh they had to wait for it to attack uh sure we'll leave that on top and hit you down to one boy we're really good at putting people to one with this deck <laughs> It's the second match in a row. Uh, but, oh, cheaty land, but opponent scoops it up. Roaming Throne might actually just be busted. Well, let's bring in our control stuff. The invasion of Gabacons. Also, like, anything that can interact with our opponent's hand. Extraction Special is also really good in these removal heavy matchups. Also, like, the thing about Roaming Throne is it works with any triggered ability. So, yes, it's in our deck to, like, double up our attack triggers, but it also double triggers our Extraction Specialist. It double triggers our mission. Like, it double triggers everything. Like, so many cards just accidentally work with Roaming Throne. The card's so wild. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> I actually think it's still, I think it's underrated. I mean, everyone knows it's like a tribal staple for Commander, but I don't think people realize just like how much potential it has in 60 card formats. All right, on to game number two. The wedding announcement's nice. This that hand actually looks really good. Our stuff's uncounterable. Ooh, and the Anim. Okay, now this hand is like kind of the dream, actually. I, like you could not draw up a better control hand than this, really. The question's gonna be, what do we do next turn? If we play Thalia, we slow our opponent down. Virtue, yeah, all right. We probably just play Thalia. The downside of the Thalia line is we don't get two wedding announcement next turn. The upside is it's gonna disrupt our opponent and we can get down the Anim and start making tokens. Ooh, Gobblecon. Oh, we probably still just got an Anim. Show us that make disappear, opponent. <laughs> make our Anim disappear. Oh, opponent. Ooh, Infernal Grass of Thalia. I mean, that is good for our opponent. It does mean we don't get to trigger Anim this turn, which is kind of big. I mean, if they can just keep killing, all right. Yeah, cuts down the Anim. If they can just keep killing stuff, they might have a shot. This does turn on our wedding announcement. Let's play the land. Maybe we Gobacom Inti this turn and then next turn wedding announcement. Opponent, quick study, draws a couple of cards. All right, let's get a let's get a peek at what you're doing over there, opponent. Hornlock whale and lands. Okay. Well, get down the Inti. Inti can flip the Gabacon at one attack. I guess they can still whale, but it's four mana. Oh, all right. Opponent draws the cut down. Sure. Well, good thing we got this wedding announcement. Ooh, and a recruitment officer. Well, get down the wedding announcement. We know that's gonna resolve. Get down the recruitment officer. I guess our opponent can blast zone it, but that's kind of painful. Pelinant, get a Mirix. Yup, yup, yup. I think we still want to flip the Gabacon. Opponent's at 20, so there's not really close to dying. Pelinant gets in, sure. Ooh, yeah, I think we play the Anim. I guess it. <laughs> I don't know what we're bluffing here, but I guess we should leave up the Boros real dual land just in case. 
I guess Plaza, if Anim's on, does the same thing, but if they kill it. All right, add the Gabagon. Opponent can prevent this with the Hornlock Whale. Hornlock Whale, the token? Uh, wait, are we just flipping this then? Well, that's pretty nice. <laughs> I guess the token goes away forever, but still, I would think our opponent would value not letting us flip the Gabacon, because that's going to turn off their next removal spell, and it's going to start growing our dorks. I mean, they can run out the Hornlock Whale. We can get lost it, but that might be their plan. If they do it during their turn, it's a blocker. Uh, opponent virtue well okay i think gabacon did its job it slowed down the hornlock whale it put a couple it put a counter on things and then uh and then save the anim opponent plays land and what's that last card i mean i guess they can blast zone away the recruitment officer but that doesn't feel great double a ganjo well play a ganjo go to combat do some attacking even without Ishin or Wandering uh, Roaming Throne, Anim Pekal is so good. This card's so good. Wow, they are going to blast on the Recruitment Officer. Do we want to activate? I think that's fine. We'll just leave up the, the Get Lost. Also, more importantly, leaving up those Plaza Heroes to protect the Anim. That's what we really... Ooh, Extraction Specialist is a great draw here. That's what we really want, is to protect this Anim from a target removal spell. Because if we can keep Anim out... Ooh, all right, Hornlock Whale... Well, that's going to get lost here shortly. Opponent gets in, might as well, can't block it anyway. Well, yeah, get rid of the Hornlock Whale, pay the ward. Yeah, I mean, I think if we leave up this plaza to protect an opponent, scoops it up and, yeah. Uh, I mean, we just absolutely bury that control deck. Up to Diamond Tier 1, we're getting close. We're getting close to Mythic. <laughs> sweet, 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 sweet. Ooh, Mishra Hand. We haven't really got to see Mishra go off yet. This might be, this might be the game. So Lunark Veteran, drawing a two drop would be spectacular. Opponent, greedy Freebooter. All right, so probably some sort of sack deck. I think we just attack, like this Freebooter is gonna do something eventually. Yes, they get a treasure, maybe they ramp into something, but this does give us a two drop because we get to just disturb the luminous phantom. Wah, uh, uh, uh. Rakdos, eh? That makes sense. Rakdos sack, uh, sack has gotten some interesting new tools. Well, let's cavern on Hugh Man, and let's play Adeline. Adeline is the worst. I actually think in our deck, Adeline is worse than Anapackle, so I'd rather play the Adeline if our opponent's going to kill something and then get the Anapackle to stick. More go for the throw. Ooh, Ishin. Well, play the land, run out the Anim. If we can have a creature live, that would be sweet. Oh, uh, bonnet tap land. Duress, okay, that's a whiff. Are we living? Oh, if we get to, if we'd have this live and play Ishin, oh, bon no. No, you got more removal? No, 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 come on, just pass. Except, except the beat down. Whew, okay, Riveteer's Requisitioner, that's fine. They can't even kill the Anapackle here. Oh, this is great. Oh, this is the best. This Copper Coat Vanguard is also great. So we need to play the Ishin. We gotta hope our opponent doesn't have like exactly cut down. They could cut down off the treasure. So we play Ishin. We play Copper Coat Vanguard. And this is going to be a nice little attack. Get in, double trigger thanks to Ishin. Make a bunch of tokens. Grows big enough that the Requisitioner can't even kill it. Our opponent, they need like a Wrath. I mean, if they can't kill something and we play Mishra, we just straight up win the game. Like the game ends on the spot. Opponent plays a land. What do you got? What do you got? Trumpeting Carnosaur into Greedy Freebooter. That's fine. And uh, I think you might be dead. I think you might be dead. That is Mishra. We got the Ishin. Attack with everything. Resolve the Anim first. Do we even need to deal combat damage? No. <laughs> that was like 20 direct damage with Mishra. Oh, this deck is so beautiful. We don't even have the ability to meld Mishra or whatever. Like it's, we don't even care. It's just like super duper mega human hell rider. Our opponent did show a lot of removal. The extraction specialist seems good. I don't know if we have to go full on like control plan, but a little more resilience seems reasonable. I don't know if we can cut Mishra. Mishra was a hero of last game. Yeah, we'll just go down one Luminarch veteran. Uh, well, one land, no keep. Yeah, this is fine. 
what are we putting at the bottom? Let's just go get lost. We, well, it's kind of greedy, but we can't cast it anyway currently. So I'm for our opponent and greedy free booter. Well, land on human. Go. I mean, we do have a nice little curve. Although we did see our opponents playing a lot of removal. Blood Tithe Havista gets in for one. Well, um, play the land and Inti. Yeah, this Blood Tithe Harvester can snipe the Inti if it wants to. Bone it. Oh. Alright. Oh dear. Oh boy. It's a, that's a lot of removal on board. This might be a problem. Ooh, Extraction Specialist is good though. That undoes a removal spell. Yeah, let's extract. Get back the NT. If we make our opponent sack the Blood Tithe Harvesters, that's at least something good. Opponent's down to two cards in hand, but they got the Bloods, they got the Blood Tithes. NT doesn't really do anything at the moment until the Extraction Specialist dies. All right, opponent going to kill the NT, sure. That's suspicious. How do we want to do this? Let's play the land. Mishra doesn't do much yet. Let's just kind of flood the board here. Play the recruitment officer. Play the Anum. See if our opponent has another removal spell. Wait, is our opponent in desperation mode? Oh, maybe. Maybe this is going better than I thought. Uh, huh? Kills the extraction. Oh, I guess that means we can't attack this turn. Yeah, that makes sense. <sighs> triple blood tithe. All right, this is becoming an issue. Yeah, triple blood tithe is brutal. We can't even really attack with the recruitment officer. Is it even worth playing Mishra? It is something big enough to survive the blood tokens. The other option is what, pass and recruitment officer? Yeah, let's run it out. No attacks, we don't really want to just trade this with the freebooter. Graveyard trespasser. We will take it. We just don't want to give our opponent the scry draw, really, why they're empty handed. Um, yeah, let's play the land. If our opponent blocks, we can sack the plaza. I think we actually kill the blood tithe. Get a removal spell off the battlefield. Sack the plaza, kill the blood tithe. Oh, this is gonna be close. Ooh, she old red. Okay, maybe it's not gonna be close. <laughs> mm, yeah, that's a, okay, can we draw a removal spell, please? How about a removal spell right now? Coppercoat Vanguard. So we go to four. Play the Vanguard. Play the Inti, but... Yeah, Shieldred, Shieldred is brutal when it sticks. Opponent's back up to 24, too. Yeah, opponent might have just drawn too much removal this game. Triple, triple Blood Tithe with a couple extra removal spells is a lot to fight through. Opponent, yep, blood tokens, gains a bunch of life, draws a bunch of new cards, hits a bunch of lands. Yeah, I guess we're gonna kill it. I mean, basically, we have to draw, we have to draw something this turn, right? Opponent scries to the top, flips. Ooh, ooh, roaming throne. Does that change things? That does double trigger Mishra. How much can we actually attack with, though? Does this give us a chance? Discard. Grow the Mishra, so our opponent can't just kill it with Shieldred. Okay, back up to 10. I mean, opponent does get to kill our stuff, which isn't great. And then we gotta chump with the Roaming Throne, or at least block with the Roaming Throne on the backswing. Opponent, back up to 15. What did they leave on top? All right, answer to Mishra. Hilariously, the ward double triggers because of Roaming Throne, although it doesn't actually matter here. If we can draw a removal spell for Shieldred, Thalia, get drained. We're pretty close to dead. We'll play the Thalia. Pass the turn. We really need to get lost. We gotta, uh, another Blood Tithe. We gotta get this Shieldred off the battlefield somehow. Pound it, attacks. So we get drained down to six. Yeah, we're gonna trade off the Roaming Throne. I think we have to. All right, get lost. Land. Yeah, I think that does it. Yeah, Shieldred. Could not find the answer. I mean, Shieldred's been doing that for a year now, more than a year. If you can't find an answer to the Shieldred, it does get you eventually. Uh, let's bring in another Extraction Specialist. That game, the real issue wasn't so much Shieldred. It was that our opponent just hit so many removal spells. 
Let's bring in the wedding announcement, see if we can get a little, a little more resilient against all this removal. Being on the play for game number three might help. I guess Destroyable is probably worth it too to get rid of a shield rid. Game number three against Rakdos. Can we roaming throne him? That's a question. Well, yeah, not enough action. They have so much removal, yeah. Oh, this is actually a lot better. We do need to hit lands, but... Recruitment officer into Vanguard, into Adolin, into Roaming Throne. Like, that's a curve. And the Copper Co. Vanguard at least slows down our opponent's removal. Opponent, Swamp, and Greedy Freebooter. Oh, you know what we'd really love to draw here is a red source. Uh, no attacks. A red source for Anna Pigal would be so good. Opponent, Mountain, and Blood Dive Harvest. All right, red source right now to get the value going. That'll work. That'll work. All right. Cavern on human. Do we play Adeline or Adam? It's got to be. It's got to be an impact. All right. It's got to be. And then we attack, I guess, with Copper Coat. And if our opponent trades with Blood Tithe, we accept that. Wow. Okay. Opponent just blocks with the Freebooter. I mean, opponent needs some removal, though. They can use a Blood Tithe, but then they're down a blocker. They really need double. They need, like, Blood Tithe and... Cemetery Gatekeeper. Okay, that's not a removal spell. We are pretty happy with that. Oh, wow. Do we draw? Oh, my God. That's another land. Okay. Uh, our throne is Roman. <laughs> uh, and this might just be game. Yes, we will take two. That is perfectly fine. An opponent doesn't even wait. Yeah, that is about a roaming throne. I mean, our opponent, I don't know if they were literally dead that turd, but double, double Anim Packle is a lot of tokens and a really big creature. If our opponent just doesn't have removal, they're not coming back. Now, that was a good one. It is roaming throne human time. Trying to uh, double up our attract attack triggers a bit with Ishin and roaming throne. Sand looks pretty good. We got the throne. We got a good curve. We got some protection. Merfolk, eh? I have not played against Merfolk much. I feel like Merfolk, Lost Caverns of Ixalan, has helped Merfolk for like Pioneer. Not sure it's done enough for it to really be a great standard deck, though, but we'll see, we'll see. I'm excited to see what our opponents got planned for Merfolk. Okay, so you have the Flash Merfolk, I guess? Well, and a Paggle. And, I mean, we're gonna attack. If they have the Stifle Merfolk, it's annoying a little bit, but... I mean, like, Stifle Merfolk... Stop the trigger... I guess that's annoying because it makes it lose all abilities. Oh, we have the Roaming Throne, so we won't get to double trigger next turn. They stifled the Inti trigger? That is not what I expected. Okay, Inti will not discard a card, which we weren't going to do anyway. Deep Root Pilgrim. I mean, now our opponent really needs a removal spell because we got the... Wow, oh, they get in. Yeah, I guess the Pilgrimage really wants you to attack. We'll just take it. We're not going to risk some shenanigans like the Flash Lord. And then uh, we are going to play Cavern. We're going to go Golem this time. Make sure this Roaming Throne gets down. And unless our opponent has some Simic removal right now, they are in trouble. Okay, Hexcatcher. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. We're going to name Human. That's fine. Uh, we're going to get in with this Anapakal. And I yeah, we'll leave the token back. Double trigger, make a few friends. Not looking great for the merfolk. Roaming throwing an Beckle is so good about it. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna do some chumping, drop to 14. All right, Simic deck, show us that removal. I guess they could uh, turn an Beckle into a legitimate business, but wow. Or you could just scoop, that's also, that's also allowed. Yeah, roaming throwing an Beckle, <laughs> pretty busted. Elspis might, I guess. Maybe a Brutal Cathar, just uh, a bit more removal. Yeah, Thalia doesn't seem great. I imagine Merfolk pretty spell heavy. Even their like interaction is probably Merfolk's. Try something like that. We gotta see Merfolk do something. Game one, that was just like the insta loss for Merfolk. We, they gotta they gotta do something better than that. That can't be all the Merfolk have to offer. Yeah, I feel like Merfolk, all there is so you have the you have the enchantment, which I don't think is I don't know. I'm not super impressed. I, a lot of people seem really high in Deep Root Pilgrimage. I'm not super impressed by it. And then you have Hexcatcher, but I think that's all you really have that pushes you to put a bunch of Merfolk in a deck. Opponent starts on a tap land. Well, Cavern on cute, man. This hand's cute. We don't really have any of our shenanigans, but double Copper Co. Vanguard is kind of sweet. Oh, the Shkuna. All right. Um, right. Let's just play 
Yeah, copper coat is fine. I don't think we're going to be discarding to Inti next turn anyway. We're probably just going to be Lauren blowing up this schooner unless we top deck something. Oh, uh, actually, uh, opponent's representing the stifle merfolk. So maybe we wait on Lauren? We do want to blow up the schooner. What are our other options? I guess we just play Ishin, even though it doesn't do anything. I guess we could also play Inti and leave up Elspeth Smite, but that doesn't kill the schooner. Even though our stuff's uncounterable, our opponent can still stifle the trigger. We're just going to play Ishin. Ishin doesn't do a, mm, a ton right now, although a 3-4 does keep the schooner from going off. Plus it gets pumped, so it's going to actually just stonewall the schooner. The defensive Ishin, the classic Ishin's a really good blocker line. Yeah, we're not attacking into your shenan- Wow, they just had to run it out. Well, I'm glad we played around it. A deck like Merfolk with a bunch of cards in hand, passing with three mana, pretty good chance they have Tidebinder because they're very much like get on the battlefield type deck. Opponent, yeah, the Ishin is going to just lock down the schooner attack. Jade Light Splunker, but leaving up a mana. Why? I guess like Fading Hope? Ah, this is actually kind of tricky again. So we can just blow up the schooner, but it might be better just to like Inti plus Copper Coat number two. Yeah, let's uncounterable Inti. Double Copper Coat's kind of nice because then your Copper Coats protect your Copper Coats. Trigger, trigger. Okay, so I did have Fading Hope. That's fine. But with our Inti triggers, we can discard land. Uh, if our opponent tries to double block here, then we get him with the Elspeth Might. So we can discard a land, put a counter on Ishin, exile a Vanguard, discard a Vanguard? We got one in exile we can play. Yeah, let's discard a Vanguard. We do want to get to six toughness here. Six toughness means we don't have to Elspeth Smite. So grow the Ishin, find another Ishin. Yeah, so now we just, if our opponent wants to block, they can, but they're kind of just chumping. Yeah, opponent's gonna take it. And then we can just play the land, play Vanguard from Exile. Yeah, it worked out pretty well. We really just need a Anim Packle or an Adeline or something. That's what we're missing is the big, the big, the big finisher. Wow, GG. Well, hmm, <clears throat> Merfolk. <laughs> Still not impressive. <laughs> Sweet. We are going for myth. We're actually one win away from Mythic with roaming Ishin humans. Can we close that? We're actually undefeated with this deck, too. We have not lost a clean run. One more. One more, and we're Mythic gamers. Ooh, Seacrum Coast. Soldiers? I mean, soldiers are kind of the traditional aggro deck of this format, right? The, the creature tribal beatdown deck. Maybe humans is better now, thanks to Roaming Throne. Where's your Roaming Throne, soldiers? We're gonna play Thalia. If our opponent's soldiers, it doesn't do much, but it's a body. Oh, Surge Engine. Okay, not soldiers. I don't know what our opponent's doing now, then. Well, let's play a Copper Coat Vanguard and commence the beatdowns. Yeah, let's get in with the veteran. Like, if our opponent trades with Surge Engine, we're pretty happy with that. All right, opponent takes it down to 14. And people love the schooner. Love the schooner way more than I would have guessed. It's actually going to be kind of good here. Actually, is it good? I, we could attack and just get lost. We can play Mishra, but we can't really attack into the schooner. We can play Vanguard and attack with the Thalia. Yeah, maybe we just do that. Yeah, we can save the get lost for when they level up Surge Engine. Yeah, I think that's fine. The problem is, so if we go on the get lost plan, it's possible they just choose not to crew and just like block a vanguard. The good news about this is opponent's down to 10. So we're getting to the point where we can just play a really fair Mishra and swing out and probably win. The opponent steals there. Can we win this turn? We want to win before our opponent starts gaining life. I guess we can also get lost at opponent gonna level up. Are we going aggro opponent? Uh, we draw land. So is Mishra lethal? Opponent can block two things. They're tapped out. Mishra drains for four. So that's six. That should be lethal, right? All right. Nothing has first strike. Yeah, we should be good. So Mishra. I think this is actually Xaxes thanks to Mishra doing a little draining. Opponent. Why does Mishra not see any play? Do people get too trapped in the like melding it plan wow opponent yeah you, i mean they are dead you can block two things but you're still taking six so opponent's like an artifact deck yeah why don't people play mishra 
I feel like Mishra's, I mean, four mana three, five, you get a lot of upside if you're an attacking deck with the like pseudo Hellrider mode. You can set it up so you get value right away by swinging in with a bunch of stuff. We haven't really, it's funny, Mishra and Urza were such a big storyline a year ago from the Brothers War thing, and neither one of them is really taken off anywhere, have they? Like, you don't really see Mishra, don't really see Urza either. Like, neither one of them. But the nice thing about Mishra is I don't think it's dependent on the meld. Like, melding is always going to be a risky, a risky mechanic in Construct, unless you get some, like, hexproof melders or something. It's going to be really tough to make that a super competitive mechanic, but Mishra, Mishra don't care. Exactly one went away from being mythic. Uh, oh, all right, one lander into one lander. We are in the draw and we do have two recruitment officers, but we really need to hit some lands. Whew. All right, cavern is huge. Any any land is huge. Cavern though might actually have value against our opponent's deck. They could have counters. They seem to be blue based or maybe white based. <laughs> On second thought, as our opponent plays that second planes surge engine. Well, if we can draw one more land, we're in in business. Whew. All right. That is one more land. Yeah, let's attack. Would you like to trade your surge engine? No. Well, all right, recruitment officer, go. Yeah. I mean, hopefully next turn we could start doing Anna Peckle things. All right, pony gets Murex, so they get blue mana for a Tranic Central. Uh, wow, that's actually super obnoxious. <laughs> oh, that is super obnoxious. Well, I mean, we're going to play the land, but now I guess we have to Brutal Cathar the Sentry, oh, which is awkward, because now if they get rid of our Brutal Cathar, they get it back. Yeah, the Annex Sentry being a 1-4 actually shuts down a lot of our good attacks. Opponent takes it to 16. Well, now we're kind of seeing the downside of Anim Packle, which is we do need to be able to attack with something, or it's just a 1-2. Market Noom. No, not the... Mmm, Dust Scrolls Reliquary. Oh, that's super bad. Opponent's like, has a lot more removal than I would have thought. <laughs> All right, yeah. Gets rid of the Cathar, gets back the Sentry, another Ginger Brew. Hits us for two. Well, Copper Co Vanguard. Recruitment Officer number three. Pass the turn. How do we trigger our hand? Like, we need to start triggering it to get the snowball going, and our opponent's making that very difficult. Our opponent, also worth mentioning, does not have blue mana and only has three lands. They're actually, I mean, maybe that's good for them. Maybe they only want three lands. Three lands every removal spell. Maybe that's the, the technique. <laughs> but it's working here, but it's not like our opponent, I don't know, it seems like they're running kind of clunky and it's still working out. <sighs> Jeez. All right, even more sentries. Opponent gets in, opponent gets in, down to, this is the, the slowest beat down of all time. Well, land on human. I think we pass. I think we're better off passing and activating recruitment officer than playing the Packle. It's just a one, two and we can't attack because all these one fours, the toughness on these sentries, my goodness. Oh, steel Seraph, that's also bad. This is going horribly. <laughs> Our dreams of mythic. Getting ginger brooded away, actually sentried away, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going to give the ginger brew what? Let's activate this. We gotta take the Lauren. Not as good as we want it to be. Opponent hits us, gains a life. So we can't even kill the Duskrow's Reliquary because of the ward. We would like to like kill that, get back the Brutal Cathar, get rid of something else. But I think we just have to kill the Steel Seraph. Even this is like doesn't feel good. Yeah, Lauren, blow up the steel, Seraph. We can't have our opponent just gaining a bunch of life, though, and hitting us for three in the air. Like, both of those things are bad. If our opponent ever draws blue mana, we're in trouble, because the surge engine is going to be unblockable. And then our opponent has a real clock. Right now, they're just chipping in for two with the ginger brutes. Maybe we're being too greedy not to kill these ginger brutes. Opponent hits us down to nine. Another market, Noom, passes. Okay, there's a get lost. Maybe we can get some weird blowout with blowing up an Annex entry. We'll see. Ah, these Anna Packles, they've looked so good through all of our matches. This is the first game they've really looked bad. They're just like stuck in hand doing nothing. Ah, this Market Gnome's actually a problem. If it wasn't for the Market Gnome being a free block, we could try to like attack with the recruitment officers and then kill the sentry to pump or something. But as it is, our opponent's at 18 and they have the Market Gnomes that they probably want to die. Apparently our deck is very bad against 1-4s. The, the extra extra toughness. Opponent's deck seems very good at blocking. Attic sentry, Market Gnomes, uh, about it untaps.
And they have just like an odd amount of removal for this. Jeez, and glass casket. Pony has an incredible amount of removal. All right, gonna get rid of our Caprico Vanguard, unfortunately. Attacks, attacks. Another. <laughs> We're never gonna get a new attack. Well, okay. Blow up a sentry, get back the Caprico Vanguard. Drop to six. <laughs> We're gonna lose to these two Ginger Brutes. The slowest. Ginger Brute beat down of all time. Well, we draw another guild. I mean, we're hitting our removal. For our deck, that's we're doing well. We don't have that much removal. And so we can play Recruitment Officer, leave up the get lost. Be nice if we had creatures that weren't one toughness. Well, pass the turn. What a weird, what a weird game. It's like Mono White, well, not even Mono White, but they're playing like they're Mono White, but mostly white artifact control with ginger brutes like i don't know what's happening oh god there's a blue mana now i guess we're probably gonna have to kill the surge engine because a three two unblockable is actually a real clock and we brute in mm -hmm, ginger brute and ginger brute so we can kill the surge engine and go to three still not sure how realistic it is that we come back from oh no <laughs> <laughs> the map tokens actually punishing us. Uh, all right. Yeah, they are good sack fodder for Dusty Rose Reliquary. Well, there goes our Vanguard. Pound it, combat. I mean, we have to kill the Surge Engine. So we go to five. We go to three. We don't really have a Wrath or anything. I'm not sure how we... Uh, maybe Mishra? Could Mishra do something? Cavern doesn't do it. Adeline. I mean, Adeline's actually got four toughness. That's something. I, I think we need more than that, though. Destroy evil. Well, I guess I can kill an Annex Sentry. We've drawn every recruitment officer, all four. Mega, Megatron, not just Tron, Megatron, yeah. Well, that was interesting. I did not expect our opponent to have that much removal, but they had a ton of removal. Bring in the Elspis Mites. Well, we get to be on the play for game number three. Thalia actually seems okay. The destroy evil might be hit or miss. It does get rid of a big surge engine once it's upgraded. I guess we just trim a bit. Maybe go one Mishra. Yeah, let's let's try it like that. All right, so we're on the play. On to game three. Going for Mythic with Roaming Throne. Roaming Throne humans. We will play first. Can't cast the get lost, but the sand's fine. Actually pretty good. Well, land on human. A Luminarch Veteran. Tap land. Ooh, land is actually very nice. Let's get down the Thalia. Annoy our opponent's removal. And in theory, I mean, being on the plane having a Thalia, good chance we get to... Okay, there's a Surge Engine. That's fine, though. Good chance we get to start snowballing this Anampakal, which is what we really want. So, yeah, land on human. Anampakal. And do a little Thalia attacking. Start growing it. Making tokens. Gaining life. Yeah, opponent does get to kill the token, but that's fine. We have a Lauren. If our opponent finds a removal, we're kind of rooting for an Annex entry here. If they Annex entry and we just get to Lauren it and get back to Anapakal, we're in really good shape. Oh, yes. Okay, does grow Reliquary. Sure. But I have bad news, opponent. Uh, we're just going to kill that. I actually think we get lost it. Cause Lor so get lost can't kill like the Dusk Rose Reliquary or Glass Casket but Lauren can. So I actually think it's better to use the get lost as weird as that probably seems. Play the land, get in with the Thalia. Start growing at him again, hit ya. I mean, if we can get one turn to get down this Ishid and double trigger at him, that probably, probably puts this game away. Unless our opponent's playing sneaky wrath somewhere or something. All right, opponent, what do you got? Land. Oh, Dust Girls are Eloquary. Okay, obnoxious. Holy removal. Wow, another Dust Grows Reliquary. Okay, that's not ideal. And levels up. All right, all right, opponent is actually putting up a fight here. So do we kill the Surge Engine or do we hold the Lauren till we get another land to get back Anum Pekel? What's our other option? Play an Ishin for no value. Play a Vanguard. We do have a full play set of Anum Pekel. So drawing another one's not, not realistic. All right, get rid of that Surge Engine. We don't want our opponent to draw three with it. Oh, uh, it land. Zote, oh no. All right, that's a big Dust Grows Reliquary. That's what our opponent's up to. And a Market Gnome. 
So we can kill the Dusk Rose Reliquary. But then our opponent discovers. Plus, we gotta pay the ward. Yeah, let's go attacking. Opponent goes to 11. So it's gonna be very interesting. Yeah, so opponent's 5 4. Oh, boy, they have so much removal. Glass casket. No, are we gonna lose Mythic right at the end? Ugh, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And here comes the Anchorage. We can kill the Anchorage, but then we give our opponent two maps anyway, so maybe we are okay with this. They make one map by attacking, but they get two if we kill it. Plus, we might need to kill this Dusk Rose Reliquary. I don't like that it lets our opponent discover. This might be the best in Soul Artifact we've seen, actually. The fact that it, like, punishes you for killing the thing is is actually really big. All right, opponent gonna get in for seven. Makes a map. Well, we're gonna take our beats down to 12. Yeah, let's draw some cards. Land, not ideal. Inti, well, better than land. The ward two on this uh, Dust Rose Relic are actually super annoying. Well, play the Inti. Go attacking. Discard the land. Pump it, trample it. Destroy evil, not gonna do much. All right, opponent's gonna block and draw. I mean, we had to get through that market gnome eventually. Would have kind of liked to hit a land, but... All right, pass the turn. Get lost kills a lot of things, does not kill... Oh, another Annex entry, okay. Kills a lot of things, does not kill artif... Uh, not kill artifacts. Please hit the... Please hit the Lauren, okay. Pony hits the Lauren. Because now we can get lost the Annex entry to get back the Lauren and kill something else. Steal, Seraph. Okay, so this went about as good as it could. So if opponent gets Steel Seraph, we do not want our opponent getting lifelink. So we're gonna blow up the Annex Entry, get back the Lauren, blow up the Steel Seraph. And if our opponent attacks, I think we just take it. Opponent passes, Elspeth Smite. I mean, we can attack and if they block, smite the Dusk Rose Reliquary. If they don't block, then we get in a bunch of damage, which is nice. So this is a very close game. All right, attack. Klein. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna discard the Ishin, yeah. Well, let's see if they block. I mean, this has to be a little sus, right? Our opponent, they have to expect some sort of shenanigan here. The thing is, even if we kill it, they still get to discover, so it's not the absolute end of the world for our opponent. All right, opponent's gonna take it. So opponent goes to seven. Well, in that case, we're gonna play the Ishin. Gain a life, pass the turn. Land for our opponent. Now they can crack some maps. The nice thing about maps is they don't get to draw a non-land, so it's not like we have to worry about them. Like drawing the Steel Seraph, for example, and getting us. Next turn, they'll draw it. Is there any way we win this turn? Let's assume they're only blockers, so this dust grows in the in the land. Yeah, so opponent's just gonna make this dust grows huge, I guess. Maybe. So we can double trigger the inti. The dust grows is gonna kill something. Can we spread out the damage in a way? Whoa! Okay. I was not expecting that. Well, odds increasing. Okay, ginger brew. Sure. So let's draw. They get a Steel Seraph, they can't use it now though. Oh, we're going for it. I think we can win this turn. So the extra card in hand is big. Ooh, also Copper Coat. Oh, this is a little, a little convoluted. So what do we have to do? We play Copper Coat. We need to go full control. After we declare attacks, draw with Lauren. So we have two cards to discard to Inti. Thanks to Ishin double triggering NT, give multiple things trample, and then we can Elspeth smite a blocker to trample over for lethal. So trigger, trigger, but before those triggers resolve, we need to uh, draw an extra card. So Lauren's still attacking. Everybody draw, hopefully they don't draw into an instant speed answer. That would be so sad. <laughs> We do all this work and they draw oh, the Roaming Throne. So we discard Roaming Throne. Inti. So I guess we just trample our biggest things. So trample up Ishin. And then discard a land. Trample up. I guess Inti is the next biggest. This should be lethal, right? So they presumably fire up the land to have another blocker. I mean, I don't even think we need the Elspeth Smite. I think we easily get it. But we will Elspeth Mike, because why not? So opponent 
blocks and blocks, and I think that is the clean 6-0 run, all the way up to Mythic with Roaming Throne Ish and Humans. This deck might actually be good. Oh, Roaming Throne and Ish together is really sweet. Opponents trying to figure out if they can block out of it. I don't see a way they can block out of it. I guess if this last card is some one mana spell that matters, but we have Ward, so I don't think it, it can be. It's not like they have a Fading Hope or something. So opponent blocks and blocks. I think that, yeah, opponent says GG. I think this is game regardless but kill the land just to make doubly triply sure and that is issued actually doing things in standard and we're a mythic we're a mythic mythic gamers this month with uh with some roaming throne <laughs> roaming throne issued humans and uh yeah this deck's sweet this deck's super sweet well uh, sweet, sweet, sweet. So what did we learn this week about roaming Asian humans? And the deck kind of crushed it. So small-ish sample size, only played six matches with the deck, but actually went six and oh, and ran it all the way up to mythic with the deck. And the deck felt really, really good. Roaming Throat is a ridiculous magic card. And this is like a really cool aggro shell to take advantage of it. We got to see Anim Packle be ridiculously game ending. We got to see Mishra. We actually did like drain people for like 20 years 30 out of the blue without even dealing combat damage just win the game with a single mishra along with our roaming thrones and our issues and then we got all this really good support and the thing i love about roaming throne is the more i play with it the better it gets like going into this i didn't even realize that it would double trigger the ward on copper coat vanguard so roaming throne becomes a human it comes into play it has ward two if you have a copper coat vanguard it has ward two again it makes our team like impossible to kill so it's like super resilient super sneaky very aggressive so so I absolutely love this deck. If you like the idea of doing panharmonic on things, doubling things, tripling things, but you also want to kill your opponent and not just dirtle around forever, this might be the perfect standard deck for you. So that's Roaming Ish and Humans. That's been our deck for today. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon. Looking for even more magic? Well, check out the deck where we played a single elephant and won the game, or maybe the budget magic where we brought Black Burn to standard on a 10 rare budget.